In other news, if Singaporeans these days change jobs every four to five years on average, the pace at which they need to acquire skills and new knowledge must intensify. Well, that's one of the main points Education Minister Chan Chun Singh brought up during today's The Straits Times Education Forum on the evolving role of universities. In his keynote speech, Mr Chan says about 20 to 25 percent of Singapore's local workforce may need to upskill yearly. That's about half a million adult workers every year. And to do this, the definition of success for the education system must change. It used to be said that we may use almost 20 years to prepare for our first job and perhaps our only job in our life. But that's our parents' generation. But what if we need to do 10 different jobs for life? changing once every four to five years on average. This is our generation. If we need to top up the knowledge and skills of our people as they take on new jobs every four to five years, that means upgrading our people at the rate of 20 to 25 percent of our roughly three million local workforce each year or about half a million adult workers every year. Hence, the definition of success for our education system cannot be just how well we prepare a cohort of 30 to 40,000 students for the job market every year only. Instead, it will have to be that plus retraining and upgrading about half a million adult learners each year. Ng Wei Kai joins me now. He's the Straits Times as journalist covering education matters. So Ng Wei Kai, this is all theory at this stage. In what ways can this changing idea of success for education be put into practice? So according to uh, Education Minister Chan Chun Singh, there are a few ways that the education system must change. So the first one is that Singaporeans must embrace continual lifelong learning throughout their working lives and two, that they must um, let go of, the predefined, of any predefined um, pathway to success, or to put it another way, success is never static. And three, uh, when it comes to skills, it's about learning, um, learning fast, unlearning and relearning. So um, this is a bold vision from Minister Chan. It's the first time he's sketching ideas for higher education. And in some ways, uh, he may be setting the stage for the Committee of Supply, which is, um, happens after budget where the education minister and the other ministers announce concrete policies and um, so right now as it stands the education system in Singapore um, produces about 30 to 40,000 students uh, puts 30 to 40,000 students a year out into the workforce so the big question that I suppose ev is on everyone's minds after his speech today is how can it cope with training half a million workers a year so that remains to be seen and um, another point I have to make is that policy is one side, you know, how this will be done, how it will be worked out. But another thing that MOE really needs to work on is to change people's perceptions on what a valuable education is. Because um, as I'm, sh I'm sure most Singaporeans will understand, it's not just how the education is set up, but it's also what uh, your parents, your family and what yourself want out of an education. And that usually is a degree. Well, Wei Kai, Mr. Chan also said the education system must do more than produce fresh school leavers for the job market. They must pay attention to those who have already graduated. What then are the universities meant to do? So what he wants to, what it seems like he wants to do um, is to really create a shift in how the whole university system works. He wants universities to have closer ties to industry and he wants graduates to, graduates to have a lifelong relationship with their alma mater. Uh, some of this is already in place and it's not entirely a new idea because last year when SC hosted the SMU uh, forum, uh, the education minister then, who was Lawrence Wong, also talked about how there can't be a, a, a clear distinction between education and work and the, uh, the old idea of having all your education in the first part of your life um, can't be the case moving forward. So 
then um, if this is how Singapore wants to move forward, it, it then becomes a question of capacity and logistics. Like how can an education system that's meant or only has the number of teachers, facilities for full-time students start to accommodate retraining maybe half a million people a year alongside the pressures of you know, teaching full-time students and the research pressures that most university and polytechnic lecturers have. Well, Wei Kai, why the need to do this in the first place? Are local universities not keeping up with global employment trends? Well, uh, it, I, I don't think it's so much that um, local universities are not keeping up with trends because if you look at the employment survey numbers tr throughout the pandemic, actually they're, they're pretty good and some of them, the employment numbers were even better than before the pandemic. But I think on a larger global scale, university education is being disrupted by the pandemic. I mean, many people are realizing that there's not much of a point of going to a university for a degree if you can learn all that stuff from YouTube or other online providers. So to me, it sounds like um, Mr. Chan Chun Singh is trying to update uh, universities in Singapore and keep them relevant in a world where uh, access to knowledge is more democratized. So um, I think so far the vision sounds good. It's quite um, beefed up, but the po policies need to follow. And you know, like policies on how this uh, vision will be supported financially and logistically and hopefully we'll get some hint of that in the budget which is set to come out next week.